Th this thing is handy, in all honesty. It holds the screws in place so they don't fall off. So I'm going to put that down in there. Make sure your washer don't fall off. Welcome back to the community, everybody, and thank you all for being part of it. If you can, to help out with the DIYs, drop down into the description and make a donation if possible through a safe, secure link to PayPal. I appreciate that. Today, we're going to do 40 IDFs. And what we're going to do is take them apart. You should do this when you get any new carburetor. Take them apart, do a nice cleaning in them, make sure everything is okay, and then put them back together and do your initial settings for the startup procedure. So that's what I'm going to do today. I think this will help a lot of people. These are pretty much Chinese no-name knockoffs, but we're going to see what they look like, the castings and everything. A lot of people have used them and had a lot of luck. And without looking right this second, I believe they're about $120, $140 a piece. So if you had to spend like $300 for a pair of them, that's really not that bad considering what the Weber's cost or the Empties. But I'm not putting them down because my 72 had uh, dual Weber, you know, the red line 34s on it, and it ran really good. As you can see there. But we're going to go ahead today. It's 9 o'clock at night, Monday night, and I have to have this video up tomorrow. So I'm filming at night because I won't skip a beat for you folks. So let's get on it. Yes, it is almost 9 p.m. on Monday night. And it is dark out, but got to get it done, and I get to get the garage cleaned up tonight. There's a pretty big crate there. Taking up a lot of space. And the next video, I am going to go ahead and pop these guide rails back off, and I'm going to paint all this. I wasn't thinking I should have painted under here first and painted the guide rails and then put them down. So somebody said it in the comments, and I can't remember who. So that's what I'm going to do to be safe so it don't rust. Okay, I don't know if you could see me out of the one camera angle, but i got to wear a harness so I can wear a stupid contraption for the GoPro. All right, so what do we have we here? We have some linkage and some gaskets. Nice and thick. Okay, and let's pull this baby out second here Ooh, very nice and honestly don't look at that so far checking the well it's even got a port for vacuum advance this might be nicer than I thought Huh. Okay. All right, let's open the other one. <coughs> oh, come on. I don't want to cut into nothing like the gaskets, so I'm trying to be careful. Careful, careful. Now these are the 40 IDFs. Okay, we got our linkages and our gaskets. See? A little bit of a razor knife mark. Wonder who did that. Folks on performance, 100% brand new aftermarket parts. Confirm the original equipment, OEM, blah, 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 blah. Units are strictly quality tested, which ensures excellent performance. Okay. Oh, 
Oh, these are, <laughs> they need cleaned up now. A little bit of oily substance, probably from uh, <clears throat> packing, so they don't get any rust on these, on the stacks. Oh, I'm actually a little bit surprised. Ooh, we're going to have to adjust. That is way too far. We're going to have to adjust that, but we'll go over that. It's not a problem. Okay, well, let's check them out and get them cleaned up. Okay, obviously, I'm just going to do one in front of you because it's silly for me to do both, and then you'll get bored, and then you complain. Well, maybe not complain. Okay, first, we're going to take the velocity stacks off. And one thing I can say is they come with velocity stacks. I've seen some, the no names, that don't come with them. You have to buy them extra. So I will say that's a nice addition. Uh, I'll see if I can find the link. I've had these for a little while, but since the motor's coming soon, I really need to get these ready and cleaned up. Now remember, any time you buy new carburetors, you must clean them out for machining, debris, and stuff like that. So. Okay, first 10 millimeter. Oh, they're on there. Take the you know, lock washer still on there. Now don't go losing your nuts, okay? Make sure, wow, these are tight. Usually don't crank stuff that tight when you got brass and aluminum but somebody did, that's okay. We'll survive it. Don't lose your lock washers. Keep them aside. Keep everything right next to what item you're removing. Okay, let's get that one off. Jeez, oh Pete. Right. Oh, uh oh, no big deal. Studs coming out with it, and we can put it right back in. Let's get the rear one here. You want me to spin that for you so you can see what's up? I think that's because someone over tightened it. Not a big deal. We can make it right. We're picking on everybody. Okay. Wow, that one is actually on there. Okay, we'll come back to that in the end because I'm going to have to grab it with channel locks or something in that narrow area and take that off. It feels like the threads are buggered up. Okay, so let's turn it back around. Get ready to remove more parts. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the main jet stacks. That's these right here. Now these aren't going to be real tight. Remember, this is brass versus aluminum with the threads. So don't get crazy and we'll put it back together, together, but you don't wanna over tighten these. Now sometimes, and I will say, okay, see, watch this, watch. I barely put any effort into that, okay? We're going to go ahead and remove them. I already broke them loose with a screwdriver. Okay. Let's turn this over. I want to see the number on these. And they are, you might not be able to see them, F11s. So let's put these aside. <laughs> Whoops. I hate when I'm working, looking through a camera. Everything looks awkward. So we have five screws that we have to remove now. I'm going to see how loose these are. Yeah, these ones were a little loose too that hold the stacks on. Okay, let's take our screwdriver. These should not be real tight either. Now sometimes, and I will say, when you have brass versus aluminum that one's a little tight you can end up with some of it gummed up a little bit but these ones aren't real bad here so come on get in there there we go 
All right, let's buzz these out. And there we go. So now you're gonna do the accelerator pump jets. We're gonna pull them out. Now, these are a lot bigger. For a normal screwdriver, see the deal there? No good. So I have a monster one to pull these out. And you can get big one, not big deal. Harbor Freight probably sells them. So I wanna take that out. Okay, and there should be a washer. There we go. There's a washer on both sides of these. There's one here and one here, one on each side. So don't lose those, okay? And you can see how they go in right down into the slot, okay? Which we'll put them back together, together. Okay, those shouldn't be real tight either. And we go. Alrighty, don't forget your washers. You don't want to lose them. Keep everything in order. If you noticed how I do things, everything is laid together. Now down inside, see down in there, the brass one? Okay, that's a bypass valve. Let me get in there. Crank that loose. And I'll show you how to put it in without it going all over the place. There we go, and there should be a washer on that, and there is. And one thing I did want to bring up I'm not happy about already is these are supposed to have copper washers. So I'm probably going to buy copper washers for these. I guess those are aluminum, maybe they smash, I don't know. But I'm buying copper ones because that's, that's what should be in there, so, okay. Now we're going to pull the idle jets out. They're located right here. Now these are easier to remove without the top being on a carburetor, okay? Much easier to get to. So we're gonna go ahead and pull these out. As you noticed, there's a rubber O-ring, okay? Make sure this stuff is on there. Don't trust assembly lines anymore. If you know what I mean, of course you do, okay? Rubber's on there, your rubber O-ring. And you notice how I'm keeping everything separate side to side, okay? Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to pull off the accelerator pump. So we have four screws here. I'm gonna try to not get in your way. Remember, take your time. You're talking about brass screws and jets going into aluminum, so don't get crazy and start cranking on stuff real hard, or you're gonna be buying another set of carburetors. Now, people sometimes run single IDFs. I don't know, I've watched a few people that have had, wow, that one was tight, luck with these. Uh, I don't know, I think with the duels on her, you have a little bit more horsepower, but there is something I will show you when we're all done. Sorry, is with running duels, what you need to do to your car, which isn't a real big deal. Okay, so give us a little love tap. Oops, and there comes the spring. So watch your spring don't go flying across the garage and then you lose it. There is the diaphragm. Take it off very gently. Don't go yanking on it and ripping it. Okay, just like you see in a Solux carb, same type of thing. So there's what it looks like inside. So I set the carb right up this way to show you something. I'm going to loosen the lock nut here that holds the Venturi. Okay, I say okay a lot. I apologize for that. That's a habit when I'm filming. <clears throat> I'm going to take the screw out. It came out. Okay. There you go. There's a little, little spring on here, so to speak, is what I call it. Okay. And there we go. 
So you want to clean everything up. I'm not going to bore you and go through all that right now. But you see how it just slides out of there. I'll get you in close. That's a 28. Okay. I said okay again. So that's going to get all cleaned up. Remember, this is just a quick tutorial. Well, I try to be as quick as I can. We'll put it that way. Remember, don't crank too tight. Here we go. Oops, sorry, I had to hiccup there. Okay. And then, of course, you would remove the other one, which I already did. I just did one for you so you could see. Now, something I noticed here. This is definitely not good. I'm going to... I might be able to turn this by hand. This is the idle screw, right? Okay. Let me move you in close. Now, when I turn this out, that would be lowering your idle. And you can see it disappear. It's inside of here. I know you're not stupid. That's not what I'm doing. <clears throat> this should be closing all the way. But it's not. All right, you want it to, though. All right, let's do an adjustment. Okay, so I'm going to... I don't think they're moving enough. Now don't, don't get like a cowboy in a rodeo and get crazy on these. Okay. Don't open them too far. I'm just trying to even them. So they seat properly. Okay, that's closer than it was before. Not as much as I would like it to be. I want them to seat in the middle. There. See how much closer now? That's closer than it was. So they are seated where they're going to be. If you want to, you can put a little blue Loctite on these screws. I'm not right now, but make sure they're tight. But again, just get the feel for it. Don't, don't act like an animal and break them or strip them out. Whoop. Okay. So those are better. I would have liked that they closed a little bit more, but they seem okay. They're seating properly is the main thing. There we go. There is our mixture screws. So I'm gonna take these out. Okay, almost. And what I am going to do is step off camera a second and just blow these holes out real fast. Give me one second. Now you have your air bypass screws right here. Okay. Break that loose, break that loose. Okay. And it keeps saying okay. You know that really gets under some people's skin. Those were a little tight. They're not supposed to be that tight. Come on, come out. I like to clean everything out when I'm doing carburetors, whether they're Solex or MP, Weber, No Name, Brussel, Quadrajet, Holly. Okay. That's enough of that, huh? Get on there. I'm probably in your way with some of this, but you get the idea of what I'm doing. Okay, I'm going to take us over to the compressor real quick and just blow these out real fast. Give me one second. Okay. Let me set this. There we go. How's that? Is that a little better? So, if you look on these, see how sharp? Okay. When you put these in, don't 
over Titan. And I know you get tired of me repeating myself. I'm sure I get tired of hearing myself. But don't over tighten them. Just snug them up. Come on, get on there. Just don't over tighten. You will do damage. We're getting there. I'm very patient when I'm there. That's it. Right like that. And I'll do the lock nut in a minute. I'm trying to look through the camera to make sure it's in focus. And then when I do that, then my hand slips off the, the screw. Okay, just, just snug. That's it. That's it. Don't overdo it. Snug that up. Snug that up. Okay, and also, look how sharp. I can draw blood with that, which means when you're putting them in, if you overdo it, you will puncture a hole in there. So let's not do that. Okay, I'll get on the adjustments in a minute. I already blew them out, though. So we're done with that part, and we have this closing that's as good as it's going to, but they are closed. So that's a good thing, and they need gapped about two thousandths right around there. Okay. Okay, just so you know where I'm at, we're going to adjust this a little bit, the accelerator pump spring. You don't want it to uh, squirt too much or you're going to have a mess that's not going to run right. So let me wind it up. A little bit more. I'm trying to get it to the end. Okay. Now, let me see. I'll go by the end. One, two, three, four, five, six. I, I was going by the end. There's craftsmen, there's an end, so I was using that for my six turns. Now, you can adjust it after this, but that's a good baseline to at least start with. So you could see how much less it's actually turned in now. So... Okay, now we're going to do something else. See your idle screw. We're going to turn this in. Let me get my screwdriver in there. I'm trying to do it so I can film until it touches. Okay, go a half a turn like that. Let me turn the carburetor over. Two thousandths isn't very much, that's for sure. There we go. Can you see this? I gotta try to get the camera angle around just to make sure it's even. This is really hard to get the camera angle on this. I'm trying to make sure they're both even, okay? And what you're gonna do, I don't know how well I'm sorry about this part. I really am. I don't know how well you're going to see this, but you need to put the feeler gauge in here and move it around there and feel just a slight drag all the way around to know that both of the butterflies are set evenly. So we're going to go ahead first and we're going to put the accelerator pump back together. So you're going to want to get your screws ready and your spring Watch out, spring don't go flying everywhere. I always like to make sure it's riding 
even. There we go. There we go. Okay. Now be careful. Do not over tighten these screws. And I know I keep repeating that, but just in case you fast forwarded through and missed something like some people do, and you'll say, he never mentioned that. Last one in here. Okay. So do a little crisscross here. Go by finger first. Okay, now don't overdo it. Just snug them up. You can always tighten more if you have to later. It may look like I'm cranking, but I'm really not. Remember, brass that versus aluminum, something's going to give. And then you got a junk carburetor. So, don't want to see that happen to you or anybody. Okay. Check to make sure the operation's nice and smooth on it. All right. Okay. And put our idle jets back on next. We're a ways off from being done, but I'm doing it in a certain order. Make sure your O-ring is on there. And if you want, you can put a little bit of lubricant around them so they don't stick going in. Verify the O-ring. Okay. And... Remember, just snug. Don't go bananas on it. Just snug. There we go. Okay, that part's done. Okay, so what we're going to do next is put your pump pump jets back together. Now there's washers. Here, I'll take it apart. Okay. You have washers. A washer first, like that, and a washer underneath. Does that make sense? A washer on each side. These have aluminum. I don't like them. I'm buying copper washers. So you see your slot. It just goes right in like that, turn it with your fingers. We can snug them in the end with the screwdriver. Let's get our other one. Okay, remember we have to have a bigger screwdriver on this because the slots are really big, but don't go crazy. Just give them a snug, just like that. So the last thing for the base part would be to put the bypass valve back in and don't forget your washer, okay? Now I have a little spring-loaded uh, screwdriver that I'm going to put on here. Give me one second, because it'll hold it in place. There we go. There we go. The, this thing is handy, in all honesty. It holds the screws in place so they don't fall off. So I'm going to put that down in there. Make sure your washer do not fall off. You should be able to see this. I got it to go in and stay. And again, brass versus aluminum. Oops, I slipped off. There, that's good. Right there. What we have now, the base is all together. Okay, I just have to make a quick adjustment, but no big deal, I'll show you in a second, is your float levels, okay? There's three different adjustments for your float levels. So what you are going to do, okay, and I'm not gonna sit there and do the whole thing for you, it's silly. Open, you're going to measure from here to here and it's between 30 and 35 millimeter, okay? Now do your own research on this, 
Then when it's in the closed position, hold it on its side, not down like that, just till it touches. Then you're going to be between 10 and 12 millimeter there. Okay, but you don't measure it closed when it pushes the ball bearing down. So opened from here to here. And when you adjust it, all you're doing is bending the tabs, just like you do on any other float. Okay, but it's not that bad to do. It just takes a little bit of patience. So now we're going to put our top on. Care up with your floats. Don't be bending anything. Set it on. Make sure everything is sitting even. Just give it a little jiggle jiggle. All right, we're going to put our screws in. One, two, three, four, and five. Take your straight screwdriver. Go ahead and tighten them down. Like I said, don't, don't over tighten. I'm not even snugging them yet until I get them all down. Oop. You just don't want to, I can't stress enough on not over tightening screws on your carburetor. Snug. Okay, we're getting there. So now you're going to take your main jet stacks. And by the way, when I took it apart, these just fell in half. Now, if you can see, there's a small slice in these. I crimped it so they were tighter, so they held together. The one thing I'm not impressed of is we have the F11 and a 115. I believe that's what it said now. And there's no numbers on anything else. Isn't that great? You get what you pay for sometimes, I guess. Anyhow. Okay, let me wind them in with my fingers. It's BS that there's no numbers on them. That doesn't do me a lot of good. Now, don't go crazy. Just give them a snug, a little past snug. Just bump like that. A little bit. Right there. Okay. All right, time for the stacks. I'm going to, whoops, almost did that upside down. Wind the studs in, short around first. One thing I forgot to mention on your main stacks, when they're out, I forgot and did it off camera. I'm paying attention to what I'm doing here. Uh, make sure you spray carburetor cleaner. We're good through all the holes in them. Clean them up. Uh, and I'll show you something else in a minute. I'm getting ahead of myself. So let's go ahead, put our stack on. Okay, you have... A washer, of course, a little lock washer. Not a wavy washer. I'm used to seeing wavy washers all my life. But, okay, spin it around. Come on. Okay. Alright, do the other one. Almost there. We gotta do a couple adjustments real quick. And then I'll leave you get back to your daily routine or whatever you're doing. Hopefully you're not at work playing around watching this video. <laughs> it's safe for work though. This is uh considered educational, I guess. You can tell your boss that. They'll be cool about it. Be like, oh man, yeah, make sure you watch that. Okay. Let's crank this tight. Well, probably the wrong choice of words, if you know what I mean. All right. We're almost there. Hang in there. Let me uh, put something under there. There we go. Now, our idle mixture screws. Uh, remember I showed you 
that they had a really sharp point on the end. So when you're putting them in, only snug it. Don't hammer them in real fast, okay? They'll seat. You'll fill them seat just like that. It's just like, I can't stress this enough to you. Use your two fingers. You'll fill it seat. Just stop, okay? One and a half out this for the initial setting. So half, one, half, okay? Well, let's turn the other one in. Trying to use that screwdriver to hold it up, which was stupid. I always try to fill its seat. Because that springs there. Okay. Half, one, half. Okay. So those are now set. Okay, so. One more thing, and I'm going to let you go. I promise, pretty sure, two more things. Now, on these, you're going to notice that both of them have them. If you remove this screw right here, see that? Right there, that little screw. That there, you take the screw out. You put a vacuum line on it, and both of them have them right there, okay? And that is for vacuum advance if need be. If not, just leave the screws in or just make sure they're snugged up so you don't have any type of leaks. You have your fuel inlets both pointed at the same direction, okay? So say this carburetor here is on your driver's side, okay? And you have your idle screw there, fuel inlet around the back for your hose. And you have this one here, okay? Now what you can do is take this apart and flip it around. Okay, don't forget your washer so it doesn't leak. So that can be flipped around and pointed the other direction. So both fuel inlets are out the back if you run the hose behind a doghouse. Okay, and then this can be unbolted and moved to this side. And there's, and there's threaded holes. You put your screw in just like you have on that side. Okay, so they can all be moved around. Am I impressed? Eh, somewhat. Okay, so that's your 40 IDF, you know, 44, 48. Uh, these are 40s on how to take them apart when you get them new or if you have them used and clean them out properly and put them all back together. Uh, these no name, Chinese no name, whatever you want to call them, uh, I'm not that impressed. Uh, on the airs, it could have had the size of stamped in them. That would be convenient, wouldn't it, folks? But it's not. So it is what it is. Uh, I'll work with them. Uh, I believe the 1904 Stroker is supposed to be here in about two weeks tops. I think it's being shipped Saturday, uh, according to Randy. So uh, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of these. I'm really not. You know, if I had the extra money just to throw up in the air, I'd probably buy a set of Webers, you know. But or empties, possibly. I don't know. But, I mean, I'm sure these will be fine once I get them jetted properly. But it'd be nice if they stamped the markings on some of the parts. I'm just saying. So, and these aren't empties. These are no-name knockoffs. So, the insides, there was no casting, sharp edges or anything. I mean, they are nice that way. I can't complain. I was able to set the butterflies properly and gap them. That worked fairly well so we'll see what happens because i gotta do a not will it run randy already did the cam break in on the uh, stroker motor so but i want to start it up here i believe he might be shipping it with a dizzy in it and uh intakes i'm pretty sure so okay so did you, did you really enjoy me complaining let me know in the comments below <laughs> I, I i have a hard time with some of this crap you know what i mean it on my 72, as you've seen earlier, I ran Webers on it, and they were amazing. There were 34s, you know, but I'll try to mess with these and see what I can do. Maybe they'll end up good, but I'm going to have to actually get air corrections with uh, sizes stamped on them, you know, so it's kind of a bummer. But, okay, thanks for being here. I'll complain again next week. <laughs> You're not used to that with me. 
Uh, I'm going to pull them guide rails back off and paint all that area and do the body work on the left front inner well with some rust bullet and the color paint I'm going to use. So tune in next Tuesday's DIY. That's what that's going to be. And we're going to rip on this body work pretty quick and hard because I want to start getting it together. Uh, I do have a sponsor with something big. Uh, I don't know what's going on with some parts. They got held up or something. Who knows? But uh, hopefully I'll have that to show in a week or two. So I hope everybody's having a wonderful day. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. And I'll see you tomorrow.